What's up, everybody? I'm your host, Kareem Jackson. This is KJAC TV, the podcast, episode two. It's funny I say that because I got two with us today. Yo, yo. Patrick Sertain, the second, in the house with us today. How you doing, man? Man, feeling good, looking good. Uh, okay, okay, okay. I appreciate you being here, my guy. Yeah, yeah. Hey, my Bama brother, I appreciate you being here. Um, but before we start, you know we got to get a nice little glass of vino. You up for that? All right, Chef Alex, let us know what we got today. Gentlemen, today we're drinking Domain of Maya Camas, 2005 Cap Sav from Mount Vidir. Good stuff. Yeah. Good stuff. Mm-hmm. We're going to have really nice notes of pine forest and sweet bay leaf. Mm. Pat, you much of a wine drinker? Not for real, man. All right, well, we're going to put you I on something. I learned from the guys. All right, we're going to put Cheers. you on something tonight. It's a... Uh, it's one of my favorite, man, my comments, man. So let me know what you think about it after we obviously get done with the episode, man. Cheers. We're going to jump right in, man. Uh, growing up in, in, in Florida, South Florida, Fort Lauderdale, uh, American Heritage. Yeah. Obviously, your pops was a, a big-time baller as well. Played corner for a long time, man, in the league, uh, Miami Dolphins. Uh, one of my OGs, obviously. Um, watched him a lot, man. So, uh, tell us about, tell us about growing up, man. Obviously having a, having a pops that's played in the league and pops played for 12 years, yeah. pro bowler, all pro, man. Tell us about, you know, growing up, um, with your pops, man, and him, and watching him ball. And then obviously now you balling. Yeah, man. Uh, I just remember my fondest memories, um, you know, just watching him play, uh, ever since I was like four or five years old. Um, so when he was drafted, I wasn't even born yet. Um, so I was just born right into the, um, you know, the football factory. So, um, you know, just being a part of that experience, man, it was life changing because, you know, being around not only him, but, you know, a great group of guys like him, Jason Taylor, um, Zach Thomas, you know, guys like that. I really learned a lot, you know, from the OGs and it really like put me into perspective um, I could take this far, far. So um, I think the big thing with me was knowing uh, what I had in front of me, you know, just sticking with the path. But um, growing up, it was pretty dope being around that NFL lifestyle. As a, as a kid, you know, I'm sure you got a chance to obviously hang around, being in the locker room, practicing all that stuff, man. Like what, what, what are your vivid memories of actually being in the facilities and, and being around these guys? Uh, and do any of them kind of translate to, you know, the stuff that that we do now? Yeah, um, I just remember uh, Pops used to, like the brotherhood was so tight. Um, he used to invite a group of guys, whether it's the DBs, the receivers, you know, over to his crib and, uh, you know, have like a little fellas night. I, he would have like a little chef come cook and stuff. But I think times like that uh, was really dope because not only being able to talk to him, but see how much of a brotherhood it really is. You know, they could talk about anything at any time. And, you know what I mean? It was just like the fellas, you know what I mean? So uh, just like how we do now, you know, we go have DB nights every Thursday. Um, and I think that's just built a lot of chemistry and just growing up seeing that I've grown accustomed to it. And now being in those experiences and, you know what I mean? Um, creating those memories with a great group of guys now, um, it's just pretty dope and cool to see. So that thing, it's, it's like it's full circle for you, man, being a kid and Pops having DB night. Mm-hmm. Now, fast forward, and you being in that same arena and having DB night with the guys, man. And, and I know for me, I pride myself on us spending real time together because it's, you know, obviously makes us closer and having real relationships with guys, man. That's what it's that's what it's all about for me. You know what I mean? And obviously I try to, you know, give give the give the guys, you know, in our D B room that same that same outlook on it, man. First of all, would, would you say I and I, I say this all the time, man. You know, I always joke with you. I say, man, you you was born to play corner. Like instead of, you know, walking, you probably was backpedaling. Backpedaling first before you was walking, man. Would you say you was born to play the position? You could say that. Um, and did and, and, and did Pop start grooming you at that early age to to you know to play the position? Yeah, I mean, 
it's just so much intellect, you know, behind the position, obviously. But um, not for real, man. Um, you know, pops ain't forced me to play football. Um, you know, he just let me do what I wanted to do. But you know, just being around it right. so much, um, I just had a love for it, and right. naturally. yeah, naturally. Yeah. And it was just, you know, second nature that I played corner. But you know, growing up. You know, I was a running back, receiver. I wanted to be on the offensive side of the ball, uh, score a touchdown. Like us all. Yeah, yeah, make plays. And, um, you know, I don't know if Drew told you, but, you know, I was, I was a little league legend uh, playing running back. Little league legend? Yeah. Man, come on. <laughs> running back? Running back, receiver. What's your best? What was your what, what's your what's your best stat line for a season since you was a you, you talking legend legend you I'm talking literally 40, 50 touchdowns that type that's legendary. Like 30, 30, 40. 30, 40 touchdowns. Running back, you know. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it was like, okay, how can I take this next level? Uh, cause obviously I wanted to be a running back uh, around that time, but next thing you know. Uh, you know, I started playing more corner, you know, and just honing in, you know, on my skill set. Right. And obviously Pops was right there, but, you know, it was something that came natural because I always had natural instinct. Natural, yeah. So going on that side of the ball, you know, I mean, it's different from scoring touchdowns. Now you got to defend right. them from scoring touchdowns. So I just had to change my skill set and that it, you know, enabled me to perfect my game. Right. So Paz never Paz never put pressure on you like hey, you gonna play. Nah, nah, nah. nah. He I'll just let you yeah, yeah. fill it out and naturally kind of grow into whatever position you want to play. But I, I'm gonna be honest. I can't see you playing no other position. Like I obviously watch you at college, at Alabama, um, and obviously now, you know, seeing you on Sundays, man. I, I can't see you playing running back. You talk. I, I don't see it. You got the speed to do it, but like, like my, I, I could say like. Oh, yo, what was your what was your running style? What was your yeah? What was your running style? Was you like I'm gonna make you miss guy or you just pure speed? Both. Both. I gotta yeah, like, see. Like my comparison, like Chris Johnson. Man, go ahead on Pat. <laughs> you know how you know how CJ just hit the edge and he gone like that was me. The thing about it is I played against I I played against CJ two K and when you talking about real horsepower, I can't I can't only imagine bro. Talking real gas like. Real gas. Oh man. Yeah, nah. CJ two K got real gas, man. Shout out C CJ two K, but uh real gas, like scary. If you don't get eleven to the ball, yeah. It's over with. Man, you probably need to have twelve on defense for him. He had real gas, man. But um fast forward, little league legend, fast forward, you get to high school. Obviously I, I spent a lot of time in South Florida, so I know when it comes to the football in South Florida, I know it's serious. So how did you decide what high school you was going to go to? Because I know you got, obviously, American Heritage, the high schools you went to. You got uh, St. Thomas. Um, you got, um, you know, a little, little further south from you, you got, uh, what, Miami Central or something like that. Uh, you got Northwestern. Um, and I'm sure, yeah, and I'm sure these are all big-time high schools that may not be as far from you. And I'm sure they probably all recruited you. So how you end up picking, which is crazy to ask this question, talking about high school, how you end up picking, you know, American Heritage, like it's college or something, man. But uh, how you end up picking that? And then what was, you know, obviously your high school experience like? Uh, I know you played with some other big time guys as well. We can get into that after that. So for me, American Heritage, it was like right, right down the street uh, from where I lived and it was basically a school where, you know, I, cause it's from pre-K to 12th grade. Oh, so. so I was, I was in there like from middle school. Um, early. Yeah, early. So the football program was kind of weak. I ain't gonna lie early on when I was there. But uh, then that's when guys like Sony Michelle and uh, Isaiah McKenzie. Sony Michelle, South Florida guy? Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. I didn't know that, okay. Um, yeah, and those guys really like changed the way how people think right, right. of heritage football because, you know what I mean, they changed the culture and they established that. Then, you know, we just started bringing in more guys, like actual good players. And uh, yeah, yeah. Then shoot, next thing you know, high school came and I was like, you know, St. Thomas was obviously 
been to top school for years. Yeah. Uh, then um, I was sort of thinking them, but I was like, you know, Heritage has something to build. You know what I mean? And I want to build something special here. So uh, yeah, I just stayed at Heritage. Then they say no, a whole bunch of guys came in with me. Like you got Tyson Campbell, uh, Brian Burns, uh, Marco Wilson, Anthony Schwartz, Khalil Herbert. I could just go on and on with how many guys we've had, you know, over the years. And I just think over the years we established like a powerhouse, you know, and it started off with Sony, then they passed it down to us. And now ever since then, you know, they've been winning uh state championship after state championship. So um Did you win a you win a state championship? Yep. Three okay. times. Three three in a row? Yeah, my four years, yep. Wow. So did you uh did you play as a true freshman? I was no I ain't play. I was on J V. You was on J V? Okay. So what 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 year did you guys kind of turn into that powerhouse? Was it your so obviously your, maybe your sophomore year or your freshman year? Where y'all? It was my eighth grade year. So eighth grade, eighth grade I was there, um, but I didn't play at school. I still played little league. But uh, that's when Sony, Sony and Isaiah, uh, they won their first state championship for the school in football. Then uh, the year after that was my freshman year. Uh, we won again. Then uh, junior and senior year, uh, we won. Sophomore year, we fell short, but right. yeah, we had some good years. So damn, three, three, three state championships. Three out of four. I think I might have played. Damn, maybe four or five playoff games in high school. <laughs> and you was the only one though, ain't it? Um, I, I I had some other when I was when I was younger my my freshman and sophomore year we had some other guys when um played some big time college ball but um I'm the only one off off of my uh out of my off off four of my years I'm the only guy that you know made it to the league um we had we had a ton of talent man you know um you know sometimes you high schools you know guys kind of go to college and you know don't really you know, take that next step as far as their career or whatever. But I was I'm the only guy that made it to the league. But we had a we had a ton of talent, man. My especially my my first two years in high school, freshman, sophomore, um, we made it freshman year, we might have made it to um Elite Eight or something like that. Uh my sophomore year, maybe we made it I think we made it to the final four. We lost played in the Georgia Dome and lost. Um and the school who actually beat us won the actual state championship that year. Um and then my last two years, man, first round of playoffs, lost every year. Um, but I mean, put I, I was a running back, you know, put up a ton of numbers, you know. Yeah, yeah, I, I've heard the stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three state championships, man. How you? Um, obviously, I'm sure I definitely ball because I, I heard something that you might have been the highest, the highest ranked. Um, what college recruit in, in what, what's what's the what's, what's that they they say about you? It's like the um, the highest ranked recruit, like in the um, in the, is it the state of Florida or yeah, like state of Florida, like DBs, okay. cornerbacks, because it was like it was like a um, it was a list with me, uh, Pat P, um, Travis Hunter, the new cat, um. Let me see who else. I mean, that's a hell of a list in itself, man. Obviously, you got Travis Hunter right here in, in Boulder doing his thing. Pat P been balling for a long time in the league, man. And, and, and of course, Travis Hunter going to be the next guy up, man. Uh, but uh, how, how did you – what was your final five and how did you decide on Bama? Yeah, so uh, – And I'm sure your recruiting process was a, a zoo, just having what pretty much the ability to go where anywhere you, you wanted to go. Um, so what, yeah, what, what was that, what was that process like for you and your final five and how did you decide, or how did you land on, you know, going to Tuscaloosa and Alabama? I was just blessed to be able to, um, you know, get those looks from different schools. Um, cause it's just a testament to, you know, how the work I put in, you know, the body of work. So, you know, I just wanted to, you know, had a situation end up like that. But um, I just remember uh, five to six head coaches putting up in one day. Uh, to my career. Same day? Yeah, yeah. Saban, 
you had Dabo Sweeney, uh, Ed Orgeron. What was that? Uh, LSU. LSU. Mm-hmm. A um, few other coaches, man. And I just remember it was very stressful because, you know, making obviously a college decision is life changing because, you know, you committing yourself to school. So um, by then, I was really favored with LSU. Um, you know, LSU always been a childhood school of mine um, growing up. Right. You know, because, you know, I got family from. They say you got a lot of family in Louisiana too, right? Yeah, from Louisiana. Um, Pops from Louisiana? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, yeah, from from New Orleans. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, mom from Metairie, so. Okay. Yeah, just got Louisiana yeah. ties. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you got the... Um, the lead sleeve with all the the jazz music and uh, yeah okay yeah I, 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 all right and then it was just like by the time I was, I was getting this like Alabama was starting to heat up because first of all I knew a few of the guys you know from playing high school like Jew he was there um, he was recruiting me to go there and a few other guys so it was like. I always want, when I go to college, I always want to feel that brotherhood. You know what I mean? Like, I belong. Not saying I ain't belong to LSU, but, you know, Alabama's resume speaks for itself. I mean, they got the championships, the resources, all that. And I just want to go to school that helped take me to the next level, you know, not only on the field, but off the field. So, um, when it came down to it, man, Alabama was the right choice. And, you know, it ended up, um, playing well for me, um, you know, started as a true freshman, uh, played some good amount of snaps, and then sophomore, junior year, put out good film and just, you know, the rest of history. Mom and Pops, I'm sure they was happy. Uh, at, at any point where they, did they have a favorite? Because what, what, what was your final five? It was Bama, LSU, Miami, Clemson, uh, in Florida, Florida State, I believe. Right, and I know everybody in South Florida probably sick that you, you know, you leave the state and you go to Tuscaloosa, man. And I know that's a question. Like, man, you leaving the state? I used to get it all the time. Obviously, leaving Georgia and going to Tuscaloosa. Um, and my my recruitment experience probably was nothing like yours. You know what I mean? Obviously, being a high profile recruit like you were um but uh but yeah did did they have a favorite like that you know they were leaning towards and you know and I'm sure they probably let you decide on your own like you know most parents do but did they have a favorite uh not necessarily but um you know they've always thought I was going to go to LSU um you know just because of how much I talked about them um how much I loved them so they were sort of favoring LSU, but they sort of realized like Alabama's creeping in, but nah, they ain't really have no favorites, you know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, it's my decision. Um, and they'll be, they was going to be happy regardless on uh, whatever school I chose, so. Yeah, just backing you. Nah, that's that's dope, man. Um, so take, take me through the whole, like, I finally get to campus. I know the expectations for you through the roof. First of all, what was it like once, like meeting Saban, and once you finally get on campus and that first practice with him? Cause he's intense. Yeah, man. Um, I got, I still have nightmares from film sessions and practice. You know, screaming at me, cursing at me. So, what was your experience like? You know, once you finally get to Bama and you know, and get in that practice setting with him, because. He'll fool you now. It's a, I'm gonna show up, you know, I'm gonna have the nice, the slacks, the nice button up, you know. Yeah, the recruiting process could be deceiving. Man, hair and stuff, you know, he put together, soft spoken. I'm like, all right. I'm like, all right, yeah. Yeah, okay, this gonna be good. It's gonna be a good experiment. Man, the first day, first day of practice, man, I'm talking he, I'm talking on me, like, God damn it, Kareem! I'm like, woohoo, like... woohoo! I'm like, woohoo, man! I might shit it went somewhere else, man. But um, what was your experience like, man? Obviously being in Bama, man, playing as a true freshman, 
him having the expectations for you that I'm sure he probably had, which was well deserved. And and, and yeah, just just being in Tuscaloosa and on campus and stuff, man. What what was that like? When I when I first got on campus, uh, I was like a deer in the headlights. I mean, because you know, obviously, when you're a freshman, you don't know what's going on. You know, what I mean, you come in with your class, but you know, what I mean, you don't know how people are gonna act, this and that. But I think. Uh, you know, the moving process, everything is pretty smooth. You know, I got adjusted pretty well. Uh, I'll say, like, the first couple of days was a wake-up call. I remember it was, like, my second or third um, workout. It was it a four-quarter program? Uh, no, it was, it was in the summer. Okay, okay. So uh, it was the third workout, 6.30. Man, I don't remember. I always remember. I woke up. It was about like seven o'clock and I'm in my room because I set my alarm. I said like so three, late. four alarm. I'm late. So shoot, I, I just wake up, put some drawers on, put some shorts, a hoodie <laughs> and don't brush my teeth. <laughs> don't even brush your teeth. Don't even, don't out even the play. door. I'm, I'm running. I probably got like 10, 15 missed calls, man. And so you about to go. Oh, yeah. I already know what I'm getting myself into. Oh, so man. I'm running. I'm breaking out a full sweat going towards the facility. And um, you ran from the dorms to the facility. Yeah. Do you have a car? No. Oh, you didn't have no car. Okay, okay. So you had to run. Yeah, had uh, to all right, you had to run. So I'm running, and man, next thing you know, I, you just see my loop in the locker. I'm like, man, I'm the only one with the loop on the locker with clean clothes. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody else grinding. Everybody else already you grinding. Just waking I, up. I'm, I'm feeling bad. I'm like, damn, I don't know how, what I'm gonna do. And at that point, you can't say nothing. You just gotta go out there. And this was, shoot, the first couple words, so I ain't know nobody, you know what I mean? Yeah, so I go in there, and next thing you know, I see the strength coach just come up to me. Was it Cochran? Cochran. He was like, man, what the fuck you doing? Isn't this your first couple of days? You showing up late and shit? Kiss my ass? And next thing you know, I'm bell crawling the whole field. Bell crawling, flipping tires, yes. And next thing you know, man, I'm just out there dead. You know, I got guys looking at me crazy, like, who the hell is this? Like, the older guys, like, yeah. so, because, you know, everybody, yeah, yeah, everybody, yeah. everybody know, like, I came in, you know, five-star crew, hottie touted, yeah, this and that. Everybody, like, man, look at this hostility ass. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was one of those moments, like, it was a wake-up call, because, you know what I mean, college is different, you know what I mean? And obviously, I didn't want to go in, want it stuff handed to me you know i wanted to work earn my earn my rep so uh that was already a bad start but um you know over the time being you know um i think i just grinded grinded and obviously practices i'm pretty sure you remember was crazy man listen here man <laughs> I, I i always remember the first day of camp where he split the team up and the guys who they thought was going to be the starters practice earlier in the day. And, you know, the rest of the guys probably practice that rest of that, uh, that later that day. So. Oh, y'all had two days though. Bro, we had two. See, we ain't had. <laughs> but that's different. I can't imagine, bro. Bro, we had a two. We would have, but not only that, like we would have a two. We had a two spot, right? And obviously at that point in time, I'm still playing corner. So we would only have like maybe four more, maybe four corners with a two spot. And we just rotating field to field, field to field. And I'm, like, I'm, I'm talking about, I'm dead. I'm dead, I'm getting blocked. I think Julio might've grabbed me one time blocking me and I'm like this, like, <laughs> one of my boys to this day always mess with me about that, man. And when I, I just know, you know, as a player in your mind, you can vividly pick out those plays throughout the day in practice where you know you're gonna get your ass ripped. Oh, yeah. So I get, I, and after practice, I'm like, man, I already know in my head, I said, man, I was dead out there today, man. Saban gonna get in my ass. Like, and I'm just pointing, I'm like, that play, that play. I'm just like, ah, finally get in there. And he put together like a little tape of all these plays. I'm like, ah, boom, first play. Well, he going off. I'm just sitting in there like this. By this Taking time, it. You can't do nothing man, about it. I yeah, yeah. By this time, I got so small in my seat, man, and in my head, I'm just like, 
Yeah, I hear what you're saying, but I was so tired, man. <laughs> he going off. He he let me. He going off. I'm talking about. And I'm just like, I remember leaving all the film sessions like my, my freshman year, like, man, hey, this might not be for me, man. <laughs> hey, might need to I might need to take my ass back to Macon, Georgia, man. But obviously it worked out, man. Um freshman all American. Uh play a ton of snaps. Sophomore year, I'm, I mean, I'm sure SEC, preseason All-American, pretty much all the accolades you can have in college. I mean, uh, won a national championship, uh, defensive player of the year. And, um, and you talk about going from missing your first workout to obviously earning your keep and, and guys looking at you, you know, being, you know, a lockdown corner and one of the best in college football was the best in college football, I say. Um, and so at that point in time, it's what y'all won a national championship 2020. Uh, who'd y'all play that year? Ohio State. Ohio State. Um, what was that at? Back at the crib, that Miami. Was, that was in Miami? Yeah. Okay. So good little end off. Man, yeah, it, it full circle again. So, yeah, you leave leave South Florida, go to Tuscaloosa, and you end up playing a national championship, your last college game in South Florida. Ton of family there, get to see you ball, all your accolades throughout college, and then draft process. Um, I'm sure it was an easy, easy decision for you to come out early as a junior. Um, tell me... Tell me what it was like, you know, for you throughout that process. I mean, because everybody's process is different because you got some guys that's kind of right on, you know, that. And, and, and it's crazy because how they put it out is say could it go as high as the second round. And then some guys, you're guaranteed first round pick like you were. Like I wasn't a guaranteed first round pick. Like mine said could it go as high as the, sec uh, the third round or something like that. Um, so. Um, tell me what was your process like for you, obviously declaring for the draft into like, you know, combine training and uh, obviously preparing for preparing for the draft. And then what were your expectations and what team did you think was going to draft you? So the whole process. Um, so during my junior year, um, it was like I was trending the right direction. Um, to be a first round pick. And um, now obviously the season ended, you had to meet it with saving and he'd give you a draft grade and this and that. And uh, they had like an early first round grade, um, high pick, so. So did he tell you, Yo, you, you gotta go? Yeah, oh, he, yeah. he was he was oh. like. That wasn't a conversation I had, but <laughs> I mean, again, I mean, again, he's always say like, if you're a guaranteed first round pick, like I'm gonna tell you to go, but. If you're not, like, I think you should come back. But I just felt like I I didn't have anything else. Yeah, I didn't have anything else. Like, we had just 14 and no national championship. I'm like, ah, ain't really nut, ain't really much more for me to do at the college football level. Yeah, so I declared, and shoot, next thing you know was getting the agent, this and that. Uh, we got Tory Dandy. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with CAA. Yeah, yeah. So then that was another process. Uh, then I trained in Arizona uh, at Exos for Combine. Um, it was pretty good. I felt like I was preparing, you know, to run a fast ass 40, of course. You know, you feel strong as ever, you know what I mean, benching this shit. Yeah, young, yeah. Young, you young, man. You got to. I, I ain't going to say I felt like that, but you. What did you do? How many reps did you do? Come on. Shit, I did like 18. 18 reps. Better than me. I 13, and I was begging for him to get that get that weight off me, man. Get it off me. DBs, you ain't gotta, you ain't gotta bench. You ain't gotta be. I think it's all about the speed and agility. What you doing? Come on. I ran four three four. Uh, but see, all year, which is interesting, we ain't have combine. We only have pro days because of COVID. The COVID year, so yeah, you got it. Yeah, real interesting year. Um, uh, 
couldn't do like no 30 30 visits couldn't do none of that all that was be, on zoom I'll be honest with you like that was probably the best thing for y'all like because i'm telling you man like oh that whole process is so hectic man like having to go when i was when i was doing that obviously taking the visits like you would go from team to team you might be you might hit three teams and then go home so it was hectic, like doing all that stuff. And then at the combine, like, I think I might have met with 30 teams at the combine. You just doing meetings back to back to back to back to back. So for y'all to not have to do that, man, shit. Y'all got off easy. And yeah, y'all got, especially if you were already a guaranteed first round pick, no combine. You just got to do it at Pro Day, man. But the only thing I'll say with that is, like, you know, working out at the combine, I didn't have to do nothing at Pro Day, just DB drills. But, um, and I'm sure for your pro day, all 32 teams were there. Because mm -hmm. you guys had, you guys were deep that year too. Was, yeah, we had, it was me, Waddle, Smitty, Devontae Smith, uh, Matt Jones, Najee Harris. Like, we was loaded. Like, it was crazy. Yeah, what, what y'all had? Five, six guys go first round that year? About five, six. That's tough. Y'all throw a big party all together? Nah. Because uh, most of the guys that was, um, draft the first round was at the uh, draft, so, and it was in Cleveland. We couldn't really, you know what I mean. But supposed to throw a big party, man. Hey, shout out all the guys. Go, uh, got drafted with Pat, man, Najee, Smitty, all y'all guys, man, Waddle, my uh, my Bama brothers. But uh, yeah, you, y'all supposed to throw a big party and 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 confetti everywhere. But after I say I celebrated, shoot, after I got drafted, went back home. You know that go to Miami. Have you won a two nights on the weekend? You good? <laughs> Draft night. Yeah. It's a, it's a, everything's a blur after after you hear your name called. It's a, it's a blur after that. I can only imagine, man. Um, so you get drafted ninth overall to the Denver Broncos. Obviously here. What were your expectations coming here? Um, and were you did you even watch the Broncos before that? I mean, I'm sure you watched football, but. Did you watch the Broncos? Did you, did, did you even? Shoot, I ain't, I ain't gonna lie, I never. Like, obviously, I know the Broncos, but yeah. you don't know what's going on with them. Like, right. it's one of those teams that's out the way because, you know, being from the East Coast, you watch, you know, Dolphins and, but the Broncos was out the way. So, uh, you know, I, I rarely tuned in. But uh, uh, my expectations coming here was, um, I knew obviously you, um, you and Justin, um, no, heard nothing but great things. So I was just pretty well, excited. You heard to come. great things about me or Justin? Me, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, Ju yeah Justin yeah. too. But you know what I mean? Nah, 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 me, me. Uh, we, don't know, we don't know about that Justin guy. Okay. <laughs> we love you, Justin. Yeah, but um, yeah, I came in here and you know, obviously it was a brotherhood from the start. Um, you know, just coming in. Uh. Being out there with y'all, and obviously with Jack bringing me in, uh, putting me under his wing uh, was very helpful. So, uh, you know, the the process, you know, everybody said they had that, you know, rookie slump. Uh, I didn't really have it because, you know, with a great group of guys, you know, it helped not only my play um, on the field, it just was something that I enjoyed uh, each and every day coming in and working uh, with the guys. So I could tell you why you ain't had that damn slump. Cause you've been backpedaling ever since you could walk. <laughs> that, that's exactly why you've been grew. You, you was groomed to play the position ever since you can walk, man. And shout out Pops for doing that, man. I'm talking about like it. I tell everybody, like I, I told you, you back. You started backpedaling first. You wasn't walking. You weren't crawling. You, you, you were pedaling. You were pressing. <laughs> you was pedaling. You was pressing from the time you can can stand up, man. I, I know. I hey, man. I know what it looked like, like. It's a difference, man. So that's why you ain't hit that slump, man. Get into your second year, another great year. First team all pro, pro bowler. I mean, year two, those are big boy accolades at an early time in your career, man. A lot of guys don't usually come into their own until year three. Uh, even if you're a first round pick, I think maybe other guys, you know, Pat P, you know, was a guy that out the gate was a baller, you know, um, 
And your what was your mindset though? Like, what was your is it? And, and I always used to always tell you like, you know, eh, you 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 gotta improve every year, and thus far you you've done just that, man. What's your, what's your mindset going into your off seasons after you have a Pro Bowl, All Pro year? You know, how, how what's your preparation? You know, do you do the same things or do you you know kind of change it up and do you know stuff different, or you know you just kind of stick to the script? I think in the off season, the most important thing, um, you know, after a long season is uh, taking care of everybody. I'm pretty sure, obviously, you could attest to it. But uh, it's just like one of those things where it's, you know, off season is time to yourself, but you got to really, like, deload and take care of your body. I think it's very important. Right. And, um, you know, I'll start going back into the works of things. I'll probably take, like, three, three weeks, three, four weeks. Um, probably get in the gym a little bit, do like some yoga flexibility uh, here and there. But then I start hitting the field probably like a month later, um, getting get into that routine. You know, my off season is pretty, pretty simple. You know, nothing too out the horizon. You know what I mean? I just focus on little things I could improve on. Right. You know, obviously technique, um, probably some weaknesses in my body that I can improve. But yeah, just honing in on the little things and seeing areas where I can improve my game on focus uh, on that in the offseason. Is Pops a, a big part of your offseason as far as like, you know, still learning stuff from him, like getting on the field maybe with him, him putting you through DB work or any of that stuff? Not not as much as he used to because obviously he's coaching. I say, yeah, he's coaching now. Was it Florida State? Yeah, Florida State. He got a boy going. The Florida State having a hell of a season right now, man. Um, they playing some, some great ball, both sides of the ball. Obviously, everybody's different. So, what's the what's the daily routine for you, like in the summertime, off season? Once you get into like the high capacity training, I would say about I usually lift Monday, Wednesdays, Fridays, and do DB work Tuesdays and Thursdays. You know, what I mean, throughout the whole week is like high intense training on the field. You know, do DB work, drills, stuff like that, uh, things that specifically translate to the game. You know, what I mean, because you don't want to be doing just, you know, any type of drills. So uh, <clears throat> I do stuff that translate to the game, but in the weight room, you know, strengthen up parts of my body that need to be strengthened, finding weaknesses and stuff like that, improving on that, but at a high intense level uh, here and there. Then obviously on weekends, I recover, get treatment, and, you know, just vibe, then back at it. So it's a consistent routine, like I could say. Nothing doesn't fall off schedule for real unless, you know, I have to, so, and I'll be traveling, of course. I gotta get my traveling in. You gotta have some downtime, yeah. What's your favorite spot you travel to so far? Um, obviously, since you've been in, been in league. I like, I like Paris. Paris? Yeah. Okay. I went for Fashion Week. Fashion Week. Uh, fashion Week. Fashion Week, dope. Fashion Week, dope. Uh, what was your? Uh, you, 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 you hit a couple shows. Yeah, I hit Louis Vuitton, Givenchy. Gucci and some other like you know brands that's coming up yeah. that's on the radar but you know I just I just think that experiencing those type of you know moments those different lifestyles um, across the country is something you need and I enjoy that so especially for my first time yeah gotta live up you're a fashion guy too man and I'm sure you know everybody seeing this probably see your gram man like I said you're a fashion guy so you 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 show up and show out, man. As far as getting dressed for the games, because that's a big part of it, you know, for us. Like, how long it take you to get dressed? I saw something where Travis Kelsey said he'd take three hours, you know, to to decide what he's going to wear. How long does it take you to figure out what you're putting on for Sundays to take a two-minute walk from your car to the locker room? Because really that's what we get dressed for. I mean, obviously... It's the mental mindset of, you know, prime set the standard. You know, you look good, you feel good, you play good. But when you think about it, you looking good, you know, to feel good. But then it's like a three, four minute walk from your car <laughs> to the locker room. So how long it take you to get dressed for that four, three, four minute walk? Like, what's your... How do you, what's your process with that? Like, and are you going shoes first, then put the fit with it, or are you getting the fit and then you're going shoes? 
to your uh, question, I I got a little stylist that help. Her name, London. Appreciate you because you help a lot. London on the track. We appreciate it. Yeah, but uh, yeah, she helps. But obviously, when I'm on my own, when uh, I look through the closet and I want to pick something out, it'll take long, probably like, like you said, like two hours. Or usually I just pick the day before so I can just get out of the way. The day before type of guy? Man. Just to get it out the way. But majority of the time, I be on that exact day. Man, it's so hard for me to go to the day before because I so many other stuff to do. It not it's not that man. I gotta see how I'm feeling. Like it's I'm a I, I gotta see what mood I'm in. Like you know, am I feeling these colors as opposed to something a little darker? You know, brighter colors. Like you know, whatever it may be, man. It it is for me. It gotta all kind of come together and. Yeah, you know, I like might and, and I might start my process the day before, but I ain't picking. I'm just thinking. I'm brainstorming like I'm about to write a paper. I mean, so I'm, I'm sitting in there and then I'm looking like this, and it all start to do this, and then I'm like, I, I know I got that shirt in there somewhere, and then boom, I go to sleep night before the game. Then I finally get in the closet and I'm just like, damn, and it's still doing this, and it's just. just that little hamster spinning that wheel, spinning that wheel, spinning that wheel, <laughs> spinning that wheel. I was like, all right, well, let me go do something else. It's, and, and man, it's a it's it's a process for that little, you know, three to four minute walk, man. But you know, it all come together. You gotta look good on Sundays. And you look good, you feel good, man. You you probably gonna play good. You know, you probably gonna play good, man. So um, before we you know get into your philanthropy work, let's talk about Sleepy Pat. <laughs> And oh, I, I, had the, I had the luxury of sitting beside you in meetings. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. It is. And, man, you talking about entertainment. <laughs> and I tell you this all the time, man. I think you got narcolepsy, man. But, uh... Have you like like seriously, have you always been like that? Like I, I I'm pretty sure you can fall asleep anywhere, bro. I to be honest with you, no. I, I don't know what happens. Like usually when you get older, you get like that. Pat, you what? 23? Yeah, I'm 23, man. I know for a fact. I know for a fact you can fall asleep anywhere. I've seen it. <laughs> I'm talking about some of the most random places, and I ain't gonna even tell them where you've. In mean, some of the most random places, Pat, I've seen it. I. To be honest, man, I don't I don't know what it is, but I'm definitely a night owl. So you have trouble sleeping at night, so. But that's not an excuse, cause every day is where I get some good sleep in, and I just be like chilling. The next thing you know, I just be dozing. <laughs> and I'm talking about it's the it's like like you in a. <laughs> I'm talking about, and it's so, and for me, it's so funny, cause I'm and I like I said, I sit next to you in the meetings. And obviously we spend a lot of time together outside of just ball locker room stuff. So I'm with you and I and I just sit there and, and I'm one of them guys I'm a wa I like to just watch people too. And I and I obviously I know you got I know you got that that syndrome, like that sleepy syndrome. I don't, I don't got it, bro. I know you got it. So when I watch you, I'd be sitting and I watching and I go to tap and I'm like, y'all gotta watch Pat. And you never fail. You just, next thing you know, your eyes go to doing this. I'm like, all right, he falling asleep. And by that time, I can't even do nothing about it. Nothing it's about like it's controlling me. It's like you try to move here, you probably hear like this, move this way, and then like that. Then this. But what I, what I will say though, what I will say though, man, talking about going and having a full day, getting up, whatever time you get up going to meetings and this and practice and then I challenge anybody to have to sit in the meetings after Man. practice and try to stay awake. I challenge anybody. Yeah. I'm telling you it's the it's hard. It is it's tough. It's tough. It man, it's a it's tough, man, because I had some days where I had to put them two picks under my eyelids like Cartoon Network. <laughs> I I know, man, it'd be tough, man. You you gotta fight it all. You gotta fight it all, man. But hey, get off your shoulders. 
So you just started the Pat Sertain Foundation. Um, you want to tell us a little bit about, you know, uh, what inspired you to start the foundation? You know, um, what's it what's it benefit or and why is it, you know, obviously near and dear to you? I've always been the type of person that, you know, show compassion, you know, towards the community and, you know, just with this platform I have, obviously with the opportunity, I don't want to be known just as a football player. I want to be a, a man that's known for the work he's done in the community, the outreach he's done. And, um, you know, when I started Foundation, it was like, I got to start something that's inspiring, you know, not only to uh, the mission I'm, you know, focusing on, but just for, you know, the world, you know, because when we got this platform, we're thinking about football and this and that, but we got, you know, the chance to change the world, you know what I mean, and this and that. Um, it's a nonprofit uh, foundation, and the mission is basically to um, level the playing fields uh, for kids that are at a disadvantage uh, financially, but uh, that don't also have, you know, the resources to attain or to get in the necessary um, school rooms that they're in. So that's my mission and to give back to the community. So it's a great thing that, you know, I'm starting up and, you know, I just want to keep on building on it, uh, giving back. Man, definitely. Uh, congratulations on that, man. And obviously looking forward to you know what you guys do with that. Um, I mean, it's obviously having a platform is one thing, but to use it in, you know, the way that you're using your platform and to, to be productive and to be able to give back and, you know, to, to you know, less fortunate, you know, people, man, is that's what it's about. Um, I, I always tell people, man, and somebody told me that, you know, you'll, you, you'll be remembered how you affect lives, you know, more than, you know, what you did on third and three and, yeah. you know, uh, or in the third or fourth quarter of a game, man. So that's 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 huge, man. Congrats on that, man. Uh, obviously, man, I always uh, appreciate having you, man. So we, a couple more things we want to kind of get into, man. Just some more uh, more of a uh, fun stuff, you know, stuff we can kind of enjoy, man. And, and and also for for the fans as well. A couple quick questions, and then obviously I'm I'm kind of uh, going through. A, 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 a weird situation right now, uh, you know, personally and professionally, obviously, uh, with what's just, just happened the last couple of days, man. So my my Twitter and my Instagram comments and captions have been a cesspool, to say the least. So we're going to kind of get into, I want to kind of get into, you know, what's like, some of the craziest things that people have, you know, said to you on your, because a lot of time, man, fans, to be honest, I don't know what fans think. <laughs> when they go to comment and then putting captions on our social, you know, um, I know for me, it don't affect me. Um, but, you know, I, I ain't really sure when it comes to other guys, if it affects them, you know. Uh, but I'm more, I'm a guy, I get a kick out of it, you know. I like to kind of mm -hmm. look and see. And, you know, I'm a, I'll am respond, you know. I got time, you know what I mean? I get bored. You know, I, I, I want to laugh sometimes. So, you know, I like to, I'll comment, you know, back and, you know, quote, tweet, and all that. You know, cause a lot of people say stuff, man. They don't truly, they don't truly mean it, man. They just want attention. And the crazy thing is, they will say that and would not say it in person. Yeah. Have you just ever meet them? It will if you get to meet them. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. They they just want attention, man. Some nights I got time to give them attention, man. You know, and just so happened, I you know I got a couple weeks of free time. You know, I have plenty of attention, so you know. Comment, tweets, all, all you want. I got plenty of time on my hand. Yeah, man. So, uh, so <laughs> talking about, you know, obviously the comments and stuff on social, man. So, what are, what is, you know, some of the craziest tweets or comments that you've seen on social? And I, and I'm sure you've seen it in college too. I mean, for some reason, people had this entitlement. 
you know, and and first place they want to run to is social to say or get whatever they want off their chest. I know you. I know you've seen some crazy stuff. If you don't mind sharing, shoot. I, I mean, we spoke on the recruiting process earlier, so you know we talked about LSU, this and that. So obviously, you know, fans will get into it. I don't know why because it's a kid's decision. But say this in this in high school, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's crazy. So I committed to Alabama, and obviously that hurt some LSU fans' heart. Um, they felt some type of way. So they thought they had the right, you know what I mean, to go in my DMs, uh, go into my Instagram section, comment racial uh, slurs. No, man. Uh, Come sabotage on. me any type of way they can. Yeah, it was bad. It was awful. It was bad to a point where my family was like stepping in, DMing them, going back and forth. And I was like, man, what, what is all this? Like, I'm new to it. Because it's like, you know, in high school, you're doing your thing. You're not even worried about all that. But now you get to that stage, it's like, now you got fans, now you got a little fan base and you got people that hate you. Hey, that's crazy to me, man. That is crazy to me. Like, who, hey, whoever whoever you are, <laughs> whoever did that to my daughter, shame on you, man. Shame on you. Bad. They're probably trolling somewhere. Yeah, shame on you. I'm sure they still doing it right now to the day, man. That, that's, that's crazy to me, man. For you to have that much... To, for you to be invested that much into a kid's decision to go to college that you're upset and saying all this crazy stuff, man. You should be ashamed of yourself. That's crazy, man. But speaking of my comments and what, hey, comments and I, everything's been a cesspool. Like, oh, man, I'm getting called everything under the sun right now. Um, hey. Hey, what you, what you said on your last post? <laughs> I'll never fold. You know me, man. I'll never fold, man. But I mean, I mean, I, I, I can't even say I get it. Like, I can't even say I get it. That's like me going to somebody else's job or just, you know, commenting or leaving captions under your social because I went into wherever you work at and, you know, just don't like how you handled yourself at work. Like, first of all, I ain't going on your social. Like, I'm like, I can't look you up. I'm not gonna look you up. Like, I mean, but it's 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 that that stuff. This stuff is crazy to me, man. But I mean, obviously, that's the world we live in now, man. I like to think, man, I got some of the thickest skin out right now, man. I'm talking leather. I'm talking leather, man. I uh, I sit there and I laugh, man. I get a kick out of it, man. People really, you know, take time to. You know, seeing all that stuff, man. I'm being called a dirty player, calling me the B word, all kind of stuff, man. And I'm just laughing. I'm like, oh my god. Yeah, crazy. People don't need they they don't got a clue. They don't know the half, man. But hey, but we appreciate all the real fans, though. We 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 hey, I'm dead. We appreciate that, man. From the bottom of our hearts, man. All the real fans, because you know, even though y'all don't probably y'all don't understand it to the full capacity or extent what we go through, but it's it's a lot of craziness that go on and a lot of stuff being said, you know, to us or about us, you know, about a game. So we we to the point, man, obviously we're getting ready to wrap a little bit more of the funny side, more more of what we usually do in the locker room with KJ TV, man. So just a couple of fun, easy questions. Uh, we're going to start with this. Obviously, Halloween's right around the corner, man. What's the best Halloween costume that you've had? When I was a jit, uh, when I was young. Uh, uh, for, uh, for those that are not from South Florida, jit means yeah. when you were a kid. Kid, yeah. <laughs> um, I had a Michael Jackson Thriller outfit with the uh, glitter glove and with the, with the uh, Jerry Curran stuff. If you had to let anybody on the team house sit for you, who would you let house sit with you and who wouldn't you let house sit? I'll let Russ house sit. you let Russ house sit? You, hey, man. Hey, I'll Russ, let, man, you, you. I'll let Russ, I'll let Russ do his thing because I feel like he's just going to be laid back, chill, watch over everything, you know what I mean? Who I wouldn't let? It's a toss up. Between uh, who? Between Mari and Beatty, Tyler Beatty. 
Mario gonna have that thing like Project X. Yeah, Mario gonna be gonna lit. Mario gonna be turned. Mario gonna have his little stage. Gonna be Man, he gonna with perform. the mic. He gonna have that thing like Project X. I know for a fact. But yeah. you said you a little. We asked Justin in episode one where he who he let babysit his kids. He said, Russ, man. So, Russ, man, you got some high favor in the locker room, man, when it comes to being responsible, man. Yeah. Um, all right, we all right, all right, cool. Stranded on a desert island. Ooh. Who would you want to be stranded with and who wouldn't you want to be stranded with? Stranded? I think I'd be stranded with my dog, man. You know, he gonna have, he gonna have the drinks. You gonna have the motion, you know what I mean? You gonna have all that, you know, it's gonna be a good time. Who I wouldn't? Damn. <laughs> I'm trying to think. PJ. Muscle. You wanna be stranded with Bank? No, 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 not PJ. Oh. Lock. Uh Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. Muscle. PJ Muscle. Hey, that's it. Nah. He, hey. Mm-mm. No, hey, that's it. For real. For nah. real. Mm. PJ. That's a no. Hey. <laughs> He uh, he owned to something with that one, PJ, man. We love you to death, but boy, yeah, you owned yeah, something wild, with that one, man. Wild. I mean. What's the, um, obviously, the holidays right around the corner. So, I mean, I'm sure you probably grew up like I grew up when it comes to the holidays. So, family, lots of food. Who in your family, and what was this, who, who made the worst dishes, and what was that dish? Ooh. Put me on the spot, man. Yeah, on the spot. I'm sorry. What was the worst dish? I want to say something, though. I say everybody in my family could cook, but there's been a few times where it was like a bit, <laughs> a bit disappointing. I could say. <laughs> uh, hey, this is going to come with some blowback for sure. Oh, man. Come but with like, I still sure. love them, though, because they know I love their food. But it was one time, uh, my great aunt, Ooh, uh, great aunt. Don't don't kill me though. Uh, I hope she don't see this. I hope she, she ain't gonna see it. They but gonna uh, tell her about it though. <laughs> she always made these good potatoes, so good. But it's just this one time, man, where she made it and it was dry. Ooh, great aunt. Ooh, Ooh. It, was, it was dry, and it was obviously you gonna eat it because you don't want to say nothing. You know what I mean? You had but, to eat it with that look on your face. With that look, like, like yeah, ooh wee, but. Yeah, it just wasn't hitting that day. I don't know what's going wrong with the pots Man. or the dishes or the the seasoning wasn't in it. But great, I'm running short on time, man. She just had to get that dish out, man, and get going, <laughs> man. So hey, we ain't, yeah. we ain't gonna hold her to that one though. So we you know moving rest of them was 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 on point, man. Uh, last one, How, you got sisters, right? Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> How, how many sisters you got? Two. You I got, got two. Got two, two, two sisters. sisters. They young, younger than you. Yeah, yeah. Who would be a candidate to be able to date your sister, and who wouldn't be a candidate? Who would be? Yeah. And I'm gonna take it further in the DB room. Only in the DB room. Only the DB. Who would I let date my sister? Riley Moss. You let him. You let Riley date your sister? Mm. Oh my God, man! He, I know he see. He gonna see this, man. He gonna have. He gonna be glowing after this. Who in the DB room wouldn't you let date your sister? Mar. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, Mar, man, we sorry, man. Mar, my dog, though, man. man That's Mar, my dog. You, hey, you, you a target right now, Mar. We sorry, man. Yeah. We love you to death, though, man. But um, Pat, man, appreciate it, man. Yes, sir. Appreciate you being here, man. KJI TV at the, at the crib, man. I appreciate crib you, man. Like I say, man, and uh, episode two, man. Let us know what y'all think. Comments, likes, all that good stuff, man. Uh, and again, man, what's your what's foundation? How how can how can how can the people find uh, and or donate or however they want to you know find your uh, your foundation and your philanthropy? Yeah, work? Um, y'all could donate on the website. That's up. Um, Donate whatever amount you want to the charity. Um, what's the what's the website? The Pastor Tan Second Roman Numerals Foundation uh, dot com. So, you know, just go on to that. Um, I would definitely appreciate um, the amount y'all give, whatever y'all can, man. Like I said, it's for the charity, it's for the cause, and anything is welcoming.